Welcome to Obsession Engineering. Me and a couple of friends have decided to come for a little ride in the country. The country is Northern Ireland and the ride is going to be at 180 miles an hour because we're at the Northwest 200. The reason for coming to the Northwest 200 isn't just the drinking down at the anchor bar but also to get my brain up to speed for the TT. As well as me having a ride in the countryside, there is also Martin, who is an actual proper newcomer here, and he's bought his BMW and his twin. And Chad, who isn't a real newcomer here because he's raced here three times, but he's redoing his newcomer stuff. And he's riding uh, Eric's little 660 Aprilia. I've got just the big bike with me, and in Martin's back cave, he's got his BM and his twin. So it may have been a while since I've been to the Northwest. Uh, 2010 was the last time I was here, it was the first time they ran the Mathers chicane. Uh, so I'm not a newcomer, but when we went through the gate yesterday to get into the paddock, they said, oh, you haven't been here for three years, you've got to redo all your newcomer stuff. So I went to the newcomer sign-on and they went, you're not a newcomer, you're not on the list. Um, so <laughs> Chad's been here more recently than me and has been told he has to redo his newcomer stuff uh, and they didn't say anything like that to me. So they obviously either know the name or they just forgot, I haven't been here in ages. Um, so I could have probably blagged it to go and do the newcomer session, but there are some reasons not to. The first reason not to do the newcomer laps uh, is that they absolutely murder your bike because they don't sweep the road terribly well here and you have to sit line astern with the bike in front and you basically get your bike destroyed with big rocks and stuff that are on the road. I have added an extra layer of like thick protective film to the front of the bike, uh, down the fronts of the um, fairings and on the forks and bits because they are going to get quite heavily peppered. The next reason for not doing the uh, newcomer laps is petrol, or more accurately, petrol. Because this is a control fuel event, so we're not allowed to use pump fuel in the bike, that's actually to go with the generators, uh, but we have to use the Panther uh, race fuel. It's basically the same system they use at BSB. It is a control fuel, everybody's on the same thing. Except you can have the 98 octane that we've got or the 102 like Superbike or Supersport octane stuff. My slight gripe with this, and I am going to have my rant early, is that petrol is 98 octane. I can buy 99 octane at three different uh, places, SO, Shell or Tesco's but I'm not allowed to use my better petrol, and that is £3.64 a litre. So what I've got to do here is run lower quality petrol for twice the price of that. And they wonder why people have stopped coming to these events. So Eric and Chad are already through scrutineering, I'm sure with flying colours, and so Chad just needs to put on his Power Ranger suit and he'll be ready to go. I'm on trolley duty for a bit. Uh, the tunnel is open that takes us uh, under the start-finish section to the actual um, sort of holding area start line uh, facility. And today we are a little bit short-staffed. Uh, my mates Jez and Decker were meant to be coming over from the Isle of Man to help and their flight got cancelled yesterday because the Isle of Man was covered in fog. So we can thank Mananan for casting his cloak once again and I'm pushing a trolley. It is definitely a good job that we weren't all in the newcomer session. Otherwise, Eric would have been incredibly busy. So you're looking forward to going really, really fast? I said that to you yesterday, didn't I? Yeah. I said, everybody here has done TT, like you and Chad and that. You've all done 80, 185, 186 miles an hour. I said, the most I've ever had is 165, 166. So that extra 20 mile an hour, 25 mile an hour, and the bike's still moving forward, it's just going to be, that's going to, that's going to be the biggest adjustment. That'll be right. Well, it's, it's got to be, innit? Is <laughs> he getting himself? No, I'm like really calm, I'm like, yeah, whatever. I've got one of them vests in his size. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, can you see, Brad? You are, you are ready then? Yeah. Which is convenient, because we were told back to the start ten minutes ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just want to get these new, to get these five laps out of the way. Hopefully they'll count as qualifying. I don't know. According to the schedule, the newcomer practice would start at 9.45. Uh, it's just gone 10.15, so we're only a bit over half an hour late already. Uh, while we've been waiting, uh, I've brought my bike up here. Um, and so that's sat on its tyre warm and it's had its first heat soak. Because in theory, 
I have an hour and a quarter before I'm on track. But you've got this session, which will be half an hour-ish, because they're all going to do four or five laps. And then there's a 45 minute or half hour super sport session and there's gaps in between, so I think we might be running late. All right, Martin is going for his newcomer laps. And that, that is quite a sedate start. All right, there goes Chad on the McCrum's twin, ready for his laps. Me and Eric can put our feet up for five minutes. Don Gilbert, how are you finding it? Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. A little bit out of my depth, I think, actually. But <laughs> there's a lot of stones out on the track. I've been feel like I've been hit by a machine gun and an AK-47. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's alright. It's good. Uh, yeah, yeah, just a bit. Uh, it's just a bit new and a bit different. The sun's shining. We're riding a bike. What more can you ask for, isn't it? It's quick, quick, isn't it? It's quick, fucking quick. Yeah, it, it's bumpy, really bumpy, really fast, really blind. So, what's not to like? Where, where's the braking marker for university? Halfway down the back straight. <laughs> <laughs> so they are calling superbikes to the grid, and I am on the superbike session with mine. The raid is going to come. They are, I'm guessing, trying to, trying to get this session running as fast as possible so people can get, hopefully, a lap or two in before the raid comes. But it's not the perfect mindset to be in, waiting for the raid to turn up. Uh, and I want to roll out right at the back of this session um, because the first couple of laps are basically reminding me where I'm going. The onboards are great, but until you've got the throttle in your hand, it isn't the same. Pulled in with a couple of minutes of session to go. I'm back at the garage and the normal camera isn't here, so it's phone cam. Uh, um, <laughs> that is no faster than I remember, in fact it's probably slower than I remember, but bumpier than I remember, so I did an outlap, then came in and put some more steering damper on it, and I've got tall gearing on it, because normally you're a tooth taller here than you would be at TT, because the straights are long and you'll get slip streams, but I could almost have done without a sixth gear. For the Superstock session in a bit, I am going to put Superstock back wheel in it, change the number board on the front to a red one, and put uh, shorter gearing in it, and then hope it stops raining, because uh, the last lap it was raining quite a lot. Brilliant. Tell you what though, she's quick. I think this is the definition of sunshine and showers. It's been that hot today that I'm quite sweating my leathers, then we've had a little shower and you can actually see the mist, like the water evaporating, steaming, off the warm tarmac. You don't see that very often in Ireland because it's very rarely warm enough. Two sessions, I think I've qualified because I've done enough laps. When I looked, you were 19th with about five minutes to go. 21st, ended up 21st. Um, yeah, happy with that. Made a mistake lap one, I had to go do the, the, the stop box of shame because somebody came by me on a, on a, with red levers and I was like, I'll use them. He breaks and turned in and went, Hickman! <laughs> <laughs> and just sat there in the, in the box of shame. <laughs> in it. But yeah, happy with it. You know, just outside the top 20 on the standard bike. Enjoy the little pretty Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't, don't need to change anything, really. I think and it wasn't revving out in top. So we'll have to check the top speed. Yeah. Yeah, it's good to be back. The session has started and some bikes have gone because it's still all damp, it's still spitting. The road is actually near enough dry, uh, but I'm gonna give it five minutes or so. Uh, I'd like this to stop just because, I know it's mental rain, but I don't know how damp the circuit is. So if we get a few bikes round, we'll get an idea from the live timing how good it is. If everybody pulls in first lap, um, we'll know it's wetter somewhere else. And it's like, I need the laps, but there's no point going out, being unsure of the weather, not pushing, this higher dropping temperature, going over a wet patch and falling off. So let's be a little bit sensible about this. As sensible as you can be when you're doing this. So sit wrap, I'm 41st out of 53, uh, and I'm the last lap I sort of tried to link it all together and um, actually got my knee down, so that was progress. 
uh, I am slowing the corners. What I'm concentrating on doing in that session was uh, getting my corner exits right. So, uh, like, slowing the entries down a little bit, making sure I was accurate, getting a nice late apex and getting the throttle open. In a few places, I was trying, I was actually slower getting the throttle open, but faster getting it wide open. So, like, coming out the um, Madden's Cross chicane, it's really slow. So I flicked it around and just made sure I squared it off and literally just went, bink, onto the stop in second gear. Um, and that seemed to help the run then down to McAvoy. But yeah, I'm, I'm slow on the flicks because I've got the bike set up to be stable, so it doesn't flick this chicane very well. So I need a, a little bit of work I can do on that. Um, it's almost a little bit, just a bit more faith in the front to push it. But I don't think that's a bad first day back after 13 years away. So uh, yeah, it's, it's quite good fun getting down the university straight and when you click sixth gear at 175 mile an hour and then you just keep it pinned for about another three mile and it wheelies over the crest and the actual speed I'm absolutely fine with just sat took behind the bubble and the bike's working and it's stable and it's just going Aah! like wheeling and stuff and that, that's great fun um, then when you hit the brakes and pop out the bubble at 175 180 it feels quite windy so that's taking a bit of getting used to my neck is aching but no, so far I'm actually actually happy enough with that. I'm ravaging on because I did actually enjoy that. It's good fun. Super bikes, flat out, are uh, cool. So when I checked the speed traps, my indication that the bike wasn't really as fast as it should be was correct because I'm 10 miles an hour down on Martin. So we've come to the dyno. Frank is going to do his power run with some air fuel readings and if we need to, we shall make some adjustments. So I'm going to go and stand outside and not get deafened for a few minutes. So Frank's done a bit of power running and we did 187.5.48 um, horse, which is not brilliant for one of these. It should be 10 horsepower more than that. And it's not terrible on fueling, but it's a, a little bit lean through the middle here and then a bit rich at the top. And it's sort of that 12 and a bit range where it, it just didn't feel like it wanted to rev. So we're going to tidy the fueling up a little bit using the RCK software into the ECU and see if we can get it a little bit sharper. Uh, if it's not mega fast at Northwest, what we'll probably do is just keep running this engine because I don't mind mileaging it and then we might put uh, the spare engine in it for TT which should be a bit quicker than this. Well, we have got the fueling a little bit better, uh, ignoring the bit where it blew the sensor out the uh, exhaust pipe, and we've picked up one and a half horsepower or so. So it is down on where we'd expect it to be, so I'm going to check a few other bits. I'll recalibrate the throttle and uh, check the air filter and go through and check some other bits. But it's, yeah, it's just a bit slower than we'd expect. Yeah, uh, yeah maybe five, <laughs> five, five six or so horsepower. Yeah horsepower down uh, yeah you know the fueling's right and there's nothing fundamentally wrong it's just missing a little bit thursday morning at the northwest and the session for the twins is just about finished uh, it's been a mixed session uh, it was quite wet to begin with and it's near enough dry the sunglasses are because there was actually sunshine in northern ireland i saw it didn't record it so it might not actually have happened but you'll have to take my word for it uh, it is now clouding over, but I'm hoping that it stays dry because I'm out next on the big bike. The most important thing that happened yesterday is Jez and Decker have turned up, who have stood awkwardly apart from each other, so I can't get them in frame properly. So, Jez. Yes, boss. Are you enjoying your first ever experience in Northwest? I am now it's stopped raining, yes. It's a lot safer now. <laughs> Uh, Decker in the early 90s raced here on a 250 so this is first time back in a while it's first time back in 27 years there's some chicanes now yes um, it was all flat out and uh, I was going around uh, from the roundabout up to uh, you, uh, the, I forgot the Metropole I forgot the name of the corners in 27 years yes flat out then uh, but I don't fancy going through the chicanes at the moment they look a bit tight Martin's been out this morning. Is it lovely and dry everywhere? No. Hammered it down on the road back into Metropole, so that was nice. The voice of experience, Eric. Uh, Rotterdam, would you be rushing out? No. Excellent. 
Richard, uh, fastest man on the twin and the 600 so far. Just watching Glen Irwin heading out. On his, on his superstock bike. Uh, I think this is superbike session, isn't it? <laughs> superstock, oh. super but Glen's uh, obviously on for a, um, a sighted lap, shall we say. He's probably got a small issue that he wants to make sure that's right before superbike practice. Would, uh, would you uh, be rushing out in this half damp session? No, not at all. I think um, we was quite lucky on Tuesday that we got some nice dry laps. So, 45 minute session, I wouldn't be rushing out at all. I'd be sort of sitting and biding my time. And if anybody improves, I'll be amazed. That'll do for me. I'll continue waiting. <laughs> Good, job. Good job. So, Martin's done a lap. Is it lovely out? Yeah. Is it nice out? Oh, it's lovely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Slicks, 180 mile an hour, wet. Doesn't work. But it's, it's in one piece, so it wasn't that bad. Chad, yeah. um, not the best twin session? No, I got 15th. Are you? Yeah, and beat mine. Excellent. So, yeah, top 15 in the damp on a standard of Aprilia. That's all right, isn't it? Shift lights come on at the end of the straight, so it's pulling the gears, front end feels better on the brakes, went on the grass. Went, Did you? Yeah, end of uh, that long straight. I uh, had to go up the slip road, scared a load of marshals, did a U-turn, pulled a wheelie up the hill. Oh, good. So 25 minutes ago, I decided to roll out and just do some laps, try and improve my lines, and just try and push on if the conditions were right. The first section of course, all the way until halfway down University Strait, were lovely and dry. And then just when you wanted a break for university, it definitely wasn't dry anymore. And so, for the first time in a long time, I was using quite a lot of back brake and not a lot of front. Because slicks on wet tarmac aren't a great combination. So it was wet from University through Ballasal around the roundabout and halfway to Mathers Cross Chicane, and then it was actually not too bad. So I decided to stay out, get my lines right around the rest of the circuit, and just push on where our new conditions were decent. By the end of the session, conditions were improving, and I was only a few seconds slower than I had been on Tuesday in the full dry. And that tells me I am definitely going faster. In the dry bits, at least. If you like some onboard action, stay tuned to the channel because I will put some full length videos up. So yesterday I was particularly bad through the chicane and I wasn't muscling the bike around so I've been a bit more aggressive through the chicane today and coming out of Juniper chicane, I wasn't trying to get my knee down but I chucked it into the right hander, uh, dug my knee into the grass that hard uh, that I've sort of pulled my leg back and that stood the bike up and I uh, nearly ran on through the uh, over the curb on the left so the next lap I had my knee tucked in a lot more. Eric is fueling the bike up with some more of the world's most unnecessarily expensive petrol uh, we'll give it a quick check over and a bit of a look round he's been saying part fermo for a bit and then in a bit we shall go and have a bit more fun in the sun. So it's all relaxed a little bit and uh, Martin's throwing things at me because he's a child. Martin's a child, uh, but he has qualified 19th overall in the Twins, so that'll do for him. Uh, I think I'm 40th on the grid in Superstock, which is okay. I think Martin's two or three places in front of me, uh, which means by the first corner I'll probably be eight places in front of him. Uh, actually, it might be all right because first gear is that long, but it takes that long to get the clutches out. Everybody else about to start. Um, it's, it's gone quiet because uh, middle of the super sport session and somebody's fallen off uh, and so it's taken a while to 
sort stuff out. Um, yeah, somebody else at church. We're not going to say who because it's not my place to uh, talk about them things. But hopefully they're okay and they'll get the rector cells and stuff sorted out and whatever cleaned up and we can uh, get going again. So I've taken the opportunity to sit in the back of the uh, garage and chill out a bit and a few minutes ago I was nearly asleep. So it turns out the best thing you can do at Northwest at either 180 mile an hour on public roads or a nice little sleep. Right, I rushed back earlier because they did the bing bong superbikes to the grid. That was over half an hour ago. Nobody told you how long the session's going to be. There's no indication of when the session might start. You just sort of hang around half ready. Um, I'm not saying it's disorganised, but I've raced in Mexico and they're more organised than this. So yeah, luckily the sun is beaming down still. The road will be lovely and dry and lovely and warm, so it should be ideal conditions for lap times. When the lights out. When we were finally let out to play, conditions were perfect. Bright, sunny, not too hot, because it's Northern Ireland, and a nice little tailwind down the University Strait for maximum top speeds. I tried a slightly different setting in the shop with a bit less preload. I hoped this would give it a bit more braking stability, but what it really did was make it less accurate down the straight, so at least I know which way doesn't work. The session wasn't without the occasional incident though, and this one was particularly curious. A yellow flag for a rider who hasn't actually fallen off yet, and he wasn't the only person who was having the odd little mistake. Martin had been catching me in that session because about the second lap he'd been doing a three point turn at university. Uh, lots of people testing braking markers. Uh, I tested mine and found that I could um, miss an apex really well if I pushed my braking marker, but no, it's uh, pretty good it was uh, it was good fun that a bit more on it oh I'd forgotten about that I'd had a bite of my cookie my muffin and then they'd called the superbikes to the grid so I'd rushed off mmm cake Dave likes cake it's got even better Siobhan's bought me a fab mm. we are fueled up tyre pressure's done and ready to go and we're ready to go for racing, aren't we? Going racing, yes. Excellent. <laughs> uh, so, first super stock race uh, this evening is six laps, plus an out lap, so we have lots of fuel in. And I'm pleased I've bought my spare big TT tank, because otherwise you have to uh, actually top your bike up after the warm-up lap. We're pleased we don't have to do that, aren't we? We are, certainly, <laughs> yes. So, Super Sport had a red flag first lap and he's tipped off at Milrose roundabout and the roundabouts don't uh, move very much they're pretty solid part of me thinks they should probably flatten the roundabout and just paint it on the floor and that would make life considerably safer but they don't do that uh, hopefully everybody who's fallen off is okay it's just taking a bit of time to clear up and then you have the thing where people are on the grid and you don't really know how long you're going to be because they're not very good at telling people anything here and you sort of like you've got to keep focused but you're trying to relax a bit as well and like we're the next race but we don't know how long stuff's going to be and yeah it's awkward to sort of stay in the zone obviously you're trying to get your energy levels up with food and drink but it's awkward to gauge when nobody tells you what's going on but we'll keep waiting first no, proper, proper big mass mass start road race fastest one of the lot Get some draft on the go. Yeah, be all right. Get get, get tucked in behind Dave's big elbows. <laughs> yeah, and uh, and pass before station. Yeah, hundred and hundred and ninety five for a speed trap. Be nice.
All right, slightly early finish to that race with a red flag. Terrible start. Well, yeah, terrible start. Nearly every front wheel taken off me. About three or four times in the first couple of corners. That was busy and I don't think I was quite awake enough. And just, yeah, just got mullered in the first few corners. And then it took me a lap to sort of settle into it and get going and then, and then you're racing. And racing is better than practice. In practice, you're working out your markers, you're trying to hit your lines, and then in the race, you just sat behind people, flat stick, going, right, how late can I break? I just load more aggressive, load harder on it. And uh, I got into it and I was enjoying it, and you just, you don't care as much. You're not worried. You're just chasing the bike in front, and it's mega. Um, and then they took the red flag out. So hopefully, whoever's fallen off is all right. Uh, I assume Martin had disappeared up the road because I didn't see him off the start, um, and I had a bad one. It turns out his was worse because he's um, he's over there now, and when we had the red flag, um, he pulled in behind me. I think he must have had a horrendous start. But we're both back, we're both safe, and we've done road racing at 109 miles an hour. It's cool. <laughs> so that is Thursday at Northwest 200 done, and right now it feels like a long day. We have been in the paddock over 14 hours today. Uh, it has dragged out a bit. Uh, but if I'm honest, when you're doing 185 mile an hour in somebody's slipstream, working out if you can do them on the brakes, you kind of forget about that, but you kind of enjoy yourself. So, turns out, I really like racing motorbikes. Some of the other nonsense that goes with it, I could live without, but that's been a decent day. So I'm looking forward to a bit more action on Saturday. Right, um, Thursday night, and we've had a day, it's not Thursday night, it's Friday night. Friday night, uh, just gone 10 o'clock, I'm in bed, ready for my big race day tomorrow. So today's a day off, uh, we've done a little bit of bike prep, um, nothing major, just a real good look through the bike, fresh oil, uh, bled the brakes and bits like that, um, and just checked everything over as carefully as you can. So we're happy that the bikes are good, and then we've been relatively chilled out day, uh, nipped to the Giants Causeway with Jez and Decker, it's been quite nice uh relatively early dinner home cooked food because we're in an apartment up the road and relatively calm um me and chad were just sat around watching a bit of terrible tv before bed he's not in the same room as me that isn't quite how it sounds we get on well but not that well uh and he just turns around to me and goes i'm nervous well you should be a bit nervous it's racing flat out on the road it's fast and it is dangerous so it is fair that he's a bit nervous but he went well he's more interested in pulling wheelies and having fun and you know he's in the race but he's not as competitive as he probably was a few years ago so he's just happy riding around but you still get nervous because you're racing on public roads really fast with other people trying to go as fast as they can and you know, there's a there's a risk element, and to be honest, if it was perfectly safe, it'd take quite a lot of fun out of it, and we probably wouldn't be doing it because it wouldn't be as exciting, and we like the excitement. Uh, am I nervous? Um, a little bit. I'm going to call it more anticipation than nerves. I am looking forward to it. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed the racing on Thursday, but I went fairly quickly. But I know there's more to come. Um, I know I'm not absolutely on my markers everywhere. And I'm not, you know, spinning the tyre too much and stuff. So I know I can go faster. Um, and I want to go faster, but without going into the realms where you're running out of road and doing silly things like that. So I've got to remain accurate. Uh, hit my markers. Getting out of the corner is more important than getting in the corner. Because the out gives you speed on the straights, which is mega important here. Um, yeah. I'm looking forward to a good night's sleep. I probably won't actually sleep that well because there is an underlying level of anticipation, nerve. But no, should be good. Get going tomorrow. Three races. And as much as I take the mickey about beating Martin, always try and beat your teammate. <laughs> because if I know if I beat Martin, I'm actually riding all right because he's going quite well. So that is the plan: is go out, hopefully get better starts than I did the other day get my head down, just go faster.
is going faster is better. Saturday morning at the Northwest 200 and the sun is peeking through. Uh, there's been a fairly thick layer of uh, sea mist this morning, but it is clearing now, so it is looking good. Uh, all of the bikes are scrutinized, all of our kit and clothing and everything is scrutinized. So in half an hour, the roads will close. We can push the bikes through the tunnel, up onto the start finish line area, get them back on the tire warmers up there. And then at 10 o'clock this morning, uh, the Tuesday's, no, Thursday's Super Twin race that got canceled is out first. So that will be Martin and Chad going racing. While we've got a minute, we can talk BMW wheels and the awkwardness that has created for FHO. So Superstock rules at BSB says you have to run the original homologated wheel from the bike. So on an M1000RR, that is a carbon wheel because it's the only option. Because mine's an older bike, you had the choice of a cast wheel or a forged aluminium wheel, and I've got the forged ones because they are a bit lighter and a bit nicer. But on an M1000, you don't get an option. You only get the top spec carbon wheel. And the very first line in the regulations for the wheels at Northwest 200 says you must use wheels homologated for the original vehicle as it is on sale wherever. So basically you have to run the carbon wheels according to the first line of the rules. The second line of the rules says you cannot use carbon fibre wheels. So basically if you're running an M1000RR here you can't use the standard wheels because they're carbon, you have to run the standard carbon wheels. So if you change them to aluminium, you're breaking the rules. If you use the original wheels, you're breaking the rules. So FHO got kicked out for using the wheels that are original with the bike because they're carbon, even though they have run them here twice before and won on them. So work that logic out. I'm not saying they haven't written the rules very well here, but they haven't written the rules very well. Alice Cecilie won the race on forged aluminium wheels, aftermarket wheels, that aren't actually legal for the class because they're not the original wheels. FHO got kicked out for having the carbon wheels that you aren't allowed because they're carbon but are the original wheels. Brilliant. Good, I need a good start and then that's it. The rest, I've got the pace but I just need a good start. Standard, isn't it? Standard. Will I be seeing you in the first corner this time? I think I'll be seeing you in the first corner, yeah, <laughs> in front of me. No, no, no. I got a good start actually at Cookstown. I'll be more I'll be more ready this time. You'll still get in front of me, but I'll be more ready. <laughs> so on the grid for the Super Twins, uh, they should have started 15 minutes ago. It's the Northwest. Are you excited? <laughs> nervous, but not excited. There's a difference between excitement and nervous. So a bit like a 14-year-old outside a brothel. I want to go in, but I dare. Are you uh, still pole position on B Group? Yes, pole. I'm look. My, the game is tag onto the back of Michael Rutter and let him drag you around. If I wasn't starting, 30 seconds behind you. But you're looking forward to it. Yeah, good start. Yeah, just good start. Good start. Good start. Right, grid is clearing. People are looking excitable. Hopefully, Martin gets a decent start from his sort of pole position thing. We have to clear out of the way up onto the footpath. And then just like the other night, the front, right, the front wave will go and then the second wave will move up into the front grid position, which can be a little bit awkward to actually find which slot you're supposed to be on. And now we get to keep an eye on the action up on the big screen. Uh, so I was uh, down watching the bikes come out of the uh, first little chicane thing and uh, the leaders have just started lap two and they've uh, stuck the red flags out, which is never what you want to see on a road race. Um, they do red flag considerably quicker nowadays than they used to, um, just because well, yeah, it's a safety thing nowadays. So hopefully our boys are all right, but it's always a bit of a concern. So probably 15-ish minutes since our uh, red flag 
and uh, some of the bikes are still on the circuit because obviously where they red flag it, they can't pass that bit. So uh, mine and Chad um, are stuck out on the road somewhere, metropole area, I thought. Um, so we are busy waiting for them to come back. Uh, we have some fuel ready for them. We are told there will be a restart, minimum of like half hour delay. Uh, so they will get times to get tyres back on warmers and that sort of stuff, and another warmer black bit. It's already started to feel like a long day, and they're only on race one, and there's six races today, and I'm in two of the last three. So, it's dragging already. I said I'm at Metropole, and I goes, I'm safe, yeah? So she takes back going, rang me, what are you doing? I said I'm at Metropole, I've just broke down, and she went, I'm painting. I went, oh, I thought you might be worried or watching. No. Is that first coat or second coat? No, painting as in, like, she's, she does art, doesn't she? So she was like, no, I'm painting. Hold on, you're telling me your wife is an artist? Yeah. And she's painting. Wow. And she's like... <laughs> <laughs> she paints me like one of those French ladies. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Love it. Have fun, son. End of lap one. ready to go now and all the hours of waiting and now all of a sudden it's like it feels like it's coming around you quite fast um, and the nerves have really kicked in so I'm gonna put the camera down do some stretches get me heading gear and probably two peas and we'll be ready to go motorbike racing fast <laughs> Uh, right, first superbike race. Uh, wasn't very good. Um, Martin actually had a half reasonable start and came back underneath me. I mean, obviously I'll go in front of him. And then he came underneath me into York. I thought, Martin's racy. Um, yeah, so he come past me and I trailed him down the back straight and I couldn't, I just couldn't have any, I didn't have enough to get out of the slipstream. Um, and so I was still following him into Mathers and his tail went today into Mathers and I hit the brakes, I thought, early enough and it turns out it wasn't. And I looked at Martin and thought, Martin's brave, he's going underneath somebody on the brakes. Uh, yeah, no, he didn't. He just, uh, he, he, he messed it up and I basically followed him because I realised I hadn't braked enough either. So, uh, yeah, a bit annoyed, lost the toe of everybody. A bit annoyed with myself, a little bit scruffy, a little bit slower than the other day, with no toe down the straights, especially Edwin down to university. Yeah, then just tried to get my head down and then they put the red flag out and then we stood sat out on the circuit for half hour or whatever then we got back here and this is the most stupid thing that's happened today come back here 
thought we could just push it straight back into the garage. And, oh, no, no, we've got to do Par Ferme. So I rode it to Par Ferme, which was already open. So I literally stopped, had to get off, and then you have to push it all the way back. Luckily, Decker was open. And you go, what was the point in sending us back there? Complete waste of time and effort. But we're back in here. Uh, I'm going to put another rear wheel in it, another tyre in it, because it was spinning quite a lot for the Superstock race. The twins have actually already done their warm-up lap. Uh, so uh, if you'd have been in the Superbike race then and out of the twin next, you will have got about five minutes to turn yourself around, which is a bit poor. So, uh, yeah, a little bit annoyed about that. Can you tell? Super, like, we've got super stock next, and then straight after that is Superbike. So whether they will actually get time to turn bikes around or not, if we get this one out of the way, this next one, if it looks like chaos, we might not bother with the last one. Busy this, isn't it, Jazz? Just a little bit. Bit good fun. Is it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Convincing myself are you, but yes, it's good fun. <laughs> Super stocks are going to the grid, so we're just going to push onto the grid and then, and then uh, we'll be right. Once I get my helmet on, it'll be all right. And once I put my helmet on, I was indeed all right, and I did some actual motorbike racing. Then the group got a little bit split up, and the newer bikes are a little bit faster than my bike, but it was still good fun. I decided to keep pushing every lap, just try and chip away and try and do some fast lap times. And on the last lap, I was on for a personal best. And then they red flagged it, with one corner to go, which was annoying. Right, did the Superstock race. That was Superstock, wasn't it? Um, and kept getting mugged down the straights, had some, had some reasonable little scraps and couple of laps to get into it and then I actually chipped away a little bit and even with the headwind I was I think a little bit quicker than yesterday. I did a 149 and a half ish on me onboard like to me if I press the button right. So I think I was going the same speed as I went Thursday um, but struggling down the straights a little bit with the top speed and um, so I was probably well I was riding better but then uh, yeah I was by the end of the race happy that I was pushing as hard as I wanted to push um, and the bike's in one piece and everything so I'm not going to go out for the last bike race it's quite a quick turnaround so uh, I've had fun everything is in one piece I was slightly annoyed that they red flagged us literally into the last corner on the last lap of the race and I was on a PB by a second or so I think so I was a little bit annoyed about that because I wanted the lap time uh, but such is life so the bad news is, you know, I'm, I'm missing a race, but I'm happy where I'm riding. The good news is, it's 2-0 to Dave in the race results against Martin. Now he can't beat me. <laughs> I might have decided I'd had my last race for the day, but Martin was heading out for the last Superbike race, and he looked like he was concentrating. Just moved to the front of the grid to um, try and wait for uh, the bikes coming through at the end of lap one and uh, as soon as the super leaders came through they've red flagged it. So uh, we'll go back, wait for Martin to reappear uh, and uh, yeah. All of a sudden I'm pleased I'm not in this. Uh, right, we're a bit concerned because Martin's not come back. Uh, everybody else is in and he's not, but one of the lads has said it's uh, there's somebody down at one of the chicanes. So um, hopefully, if it is him, he's just got run onto the grass or something, or I don't know, but um, yeah, not very good. Stressing me out, Martin. Luckily, uh, it wasn't Martin, so he's come back, but he's been out, stuck out on the circuit for 30, 40 minutes while they sorted the incident out or whatever. Um, and of course he's got cold tyres and he's come in and they've literally gone right two minutes off we go again uh, so sensibly he's not going out because the tyres are cold and it's just a stupid idea uh, obviously the big superbike teams they come in and they've already got spare wheels on warmers so they took them in and they're off 
Um, but expecting somebody to go out, yeah, it's a nine mile warm up lap, but it's so much risk on the warm up lap um, that it's just stupid, really. Uh, so he's calling it, which is the sensible thing to do. Possibly the man of the meeting, not being off the podium all week, two wins, a second, a third, Richard Cooper. It's gone all right, hasn't it? I doubt we'll be man of the meeting because I'm not Irish, so that's never going to happen. <laughs> first things first. But no, uh, fantastic. Two wins on the Super Twin. A little bit of uh, justice been served after what happened last year. You know, bike was no different, technically. Yeah. You know, it is what it is type thing. Um, and then Super Sport, two hard podiums, you know third on Thursday's race and then had to fight for that one I ran on at Mavers Cross on the first lap and I was like stupid mistake I had more track knowledge than anybody because I'd just been out in the twins but yet I still ran on but to come back and almost win it was pretty cool um, you know I pick and choose what I want to do this is what I want to do maybe I'll do another BSB later in the year I'm not quite sure yet but it's been great yeah cracking as long as you've had fun I always have fun, um, and I must mention that your boy Franco, fair play. I don't. I watch Superstock with great interest after being a champion a couple of times, and what he's doing is very impressive. Uh, must admit, and uh, hope his season continues. Cool. Cheers, Richard. And I hope you have a good night. Thank you, much. <laughs> so then, Josh, you, you've come to help out. You, you're the T boy this week. Uh, yeah, uh, me and my mates here have been very busy this weekend <laughs> or this week, should I say? No, it's, uh, it's been good, hasn't it? It's the first, first time here in Ireland, and I think I'll definitely be back. Definitely going to say Party that. Next time. Maybe not next year. Uh, it's definitely on the cards, so though. I'm going to be doing it at some point. I think I need to mature a little bit first, <laughs> because I'll be trying to latch onto the back of me here, something stupid. I want, the main reason I came here is one to the proper Irish pint of Guinness. So I still haven't had one. So I'll probably walk down to the anchor, have a pint of Guinness, and then come back and... That's if we ever get packed up. <laughs> but I definitely want to get a pint of Guinness before I go. Might have to be in the morning at this rate. <laughs> Donington's going to seem tame compared to this, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Donington has seen like a chillaxing weekend. However, I've got to go back tomorrow and help these lot build my super bike from Alton still. So. <laughs> <laughs> <Your plan. laughs> it's a, I might get home this t- sometime this year, I don't know. Cool. Cheers. Cheers for having me again. <laughs> So that is the end of Northwest 200 2023. It is fair to say my brain is definitely up to speed for TT. It's been good fun dicing around with Martin as well. It would be lovely if the place was a little bit more uh, organised, but it has been good fun going really, really fast. So thank you for watching. Join us next time when we'll be going really, really fast on motorbikes again.